Okay, everybody, Fred again. All right, here's the finished product after I get done soldering. Got the eyelet with the screws, the screw end, rather, soldered to the 12 inch piece with the 5 8 so it'll be 12, 13, 14 inch or so piece by the time I got done finished. Then I got the 6 inch piece welded to the 5 and 5 8 mark from the bend which has the one inch piece soldered to the end of it and the other one inch piece soldered to the four and a half mark so you can see the shape of this coming across with the bend up and that these two one inch are on the same side and they're squared to roughly squared to the the longer piece so what I've done is now I had some stuff downstairs from uh, left over from a job to scrap I was going to use it for kindling for uh, the outdoor outdoor uh, fireplace so I grabbed a piece and started playing around with it um, so this is a three quarter inch by six inch plank um, I cut it about 14 inches long and while I was at the hardware store I bought some PVC parts this is inch and a quarter stuff um, I've got an inch and a quarter cap which completely seals the end of it and then I bought a length of inch and a quarter um, plumber pipe and a 45 degree elbow so uh, with putting the caps and the elbows together, you got to cut off a little piece, and I didn't bother gluing it because this is kind of like a prototype of my design. So, uh, little piece to connect the cap to the elbow, and then in here is a little piece to fill in that inch and a quarter gap. So uh, it's not as big, so the rod fits better in it. So. I measured in oh, an inch and made a center mark and then centered the PVC together over that mark and I ran three screws in. That's why I ended up getting a cap to so I can affix it to the board so it's nice and strong. And the screws don't touch the end of the rod so I don't have to worry about uh, miring up my really good equipment. Um, so we got the finished product of soldered and I measured in an inch off the board right there and it's centered in the board. Now comes the eyelet with the screw on the end. Just screw this in. Hindsight, I would have gotten some bigger eyelets with some more aggressive threads, but uh, as I said for the prototype, I'm really not going to be too awful fussy about it. So I screwed it in so the eyelet is squared to the PVC where the rod sits. So how this is facing is like this. Okay, and the rod sits in like so. Uh, what I did was I got some tip-up line. This is the best way I could I could think at the time. Since then, I've come up with some other ideas, but I made a loop, just tied a knot, clipped off the tails, a loop, and on the end of the rod, I attached the loop. Just put it through itself, so it, it's attached to the pole but not tied on. I could take it off if I want to switch to another rod or or what have you. Um, so took the jig, pulled off some line. This is how this thing works. Okay. The rod gets bent and 
the band goes through the tip-up line, the tip-up line uh, loop that I made, and then the line going to the hole goes around number one at the five at the four and a half mark, and then over the end. And sits in centered over the hole. It's kind of hard to show you where the jig is, and it might be hard to see the line, but it's running like this. So when the fish bites, I'm gonna try not to hook myself here. And I let go of the jig. Boom! Rod goes up. This is a, a light action rod, so it's not got the snap that I would like to see. Um, I've tested this on uh, some medium action rods. And they seem to work pretty good for that. Um, I'll show you again. I'll try to let go of the jig a little faster. Okay, so with the light action rod, it's not really setting the hook as much as it is showing me that I got a bite. So I have a bunch of these set out in place of tip ups um, perch fishing, crappie fishing, walleyes, lake trout, uh, rainbows. Um, Basically anything you would set a tip up for pike, you know all those all those fish. Um, I set these in this place. Um, I put this bend of wire, drilled two holes, and I kind of made a shape to s stick in the holes to make an angle. So when the contraption goes off, it hits that wire and it slides that out of the way so that the line's not tangling up in the trigger mechanism. Uh, this is the prototype. Um, and all I did was took that same wire and I was bending it around trying to get the mechanics of how this all worked. So I got the bend and I got the one inch piece and I got the six inch piece and put a piece of masking tape on which made it a, a level and I set the line on that still has the eyelet screw but it's twisted so I wanted to go with the soldering I think it looked a little cleaner um, my plan is to paint these and um, get them out in the field and have some fun with them and uh, if this is something that uh, any of you want to try to make feel free uh, I didn't apply for a patent or anything like that. Um, I'm not going to make these uh, for sale in all the big shops. Uh, what I will think, uh, I think I will go to some of the, the bait shops and show them how these work. And, and maybe there might be some guys that would want to buy some of these. As far as cost, uh, I think I've got it right around 4 to $5.00. Uh, maybe six if you had to buy the wood. Um, a lot of the, a lot of the hardware places, the lumber places, might have some tails that they've cut off that you know aren't worth anything to them, or they get rid of for really cheap. Keep your eyes out for that. Uh, so really, the expense was this spool of wire, which is more than enough to make I would say probably 16, 15, 16 of these easily, and the PVC pieces. Uh, the roll of wire was 10 bucks. The PVC is a couple bucks, uh, uh, maybe three. Um, so all in all, very inexpensive way to do it. Um, and I had a lot of fun playing with it. So um, hopefully I can, I'll get you a, a video of these things in action out on the ice and uh, so you guys can see my design, how it worked. All right. Thanks for watching, everybody.